ओम ज्ञानतिरांधस्यानाजनशलाकया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिदातस्वामीनामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे यस्टडे वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट हु इज एलिजिबल फॉर लिबरेशन वॉट इज लिबरेशन मीन लिबरेशन मीन्स वी नो लॉन्गर हैव टू suffer in this world the fundamental miseries and all other miseries also we can completely become free from them provided we become eligible so the eligibility is specifically given by krishna in this 15th verse of the second chapter yam hina vyathayantyete purusham purushar shabha सम दुख सुखम धीरम सो अमृतवाय कल्पते सो दिस भगवद गीता इज टेलिंग अस अबाउट इमोर्टैलिटी इमोर्टल लाइफ इमोर्टल वे ऑफ लिविंग दैट इज न्यू टू मैनी मैनी पीपल हु थिंक दैट लाइफ मीन्स लाइफ हियर इन दिस वर्ल्ड the way we take birth and we go through so many different uh, uh, experiences of sukha dukha and then ultimately everything is finished when death comes no this is not the correct understanding bhagavad gita is telling there is another life there is another world there is another uh, way of uh, living eternal life full of bliss full of knowledge In, with krishna in the spiritual world so that information you can't get in ordinary books you can't get anywhere except uh, such authentic uh, vedic literature so uh, krishna is telling that uh, uh, you should understand about yourself as the spirit soul having this quality of being eternal the soul doesn't die you don't die when death comes you change the body so to be able to uh, remain sober remain uh, not not get bewildered remain completely uh, undisturbed that's the word that is used undisturbed dhira at the time of death and before death comes we have to also practice sama dukha sukham how we should uh, practice what should we practice the only practice that is really effective is this bhakti yoga practice of bhakti yoga all other yoga systems if at all somebody is practicing for whatever reason that will lead them to bhakti yoga if they are properly doing that other yoga practices it will lead them to bhakti yoga but somebody is fortunate they don't have to go through the other yoga systems and then come to bhakti yoga a fortunate person can directly begin bhakti yoga or directly practice bhakti yoga without waiting for uh, becoming uh, qualified to practice bhakti yoga so what is the qualification for somebody who wants to practice bhakti yoga it is actually coming into the association of a pure devotee coming in contact with a pure devotee pure devotees come from the spiritual world and they are actually uh, coming for 
giving this knowledge and teaching us the practice of bhakti yoga directly without having to wait for taking a bhakti yoga after practicing other yoga systems besides that in this age that we are living in it is really uh, not very practical to follow any of the other uh, rules and regulations of the other yoga systems that is also indicated by krishna in this bhagavad gita as we will discuss in the later <clears throat> verses that uh, none of these other yoga systems are actually very practical uh, for implementation so the most feasible most uh, practical and the most effective system of yoga is bhakti yoga so that bhakti yoga practice is necessary to become uh, to remain undisturbed at the time of death by practicing being equipoised in the face of uh, happiness and distress both neither so much excited about happiness nor uh, being uh, uh, disturbed or becoming depressed when there is some cause for uh, unhappiness when there is some distress how is it how is it practically done so uh, krishna is giving that knowledge that understanding our fundamental nature we are spirit soul nityaha shashvataha puranaha three qualities krishna is mentioning here nityaha means we are eternal this we have already discussed earlier also then shashvataha means we have a permanent existence permanent existence permanent existence not like the present existence where things are going on changing 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 we do not know what to expect uh, in the future not always exactly we can be sure uh, maybe some uh, distress may come upon us or maybe some a good time or some happiness or maybe not, nothing significant may happen life may just go on the same way it is going on so we are we cannot be certain whereas spiritual life is totally different it is permanent life with no miseries with no dangers with no uncertainties this is very important with no uncertainties so that is our original nature that's our real nature shashvata purana purana means very 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 old so because we have always existed it's not that we came into existence when we took birth in this body no we always exist we have been existing uh, millions of lives we have uh, been uh, passing through so we have always existed now old doesn't mean spiritually that we undergo symptoms of old age like in this body no very very old doesn't mean that uh, we have symptoms of uh, a very weak body or some invalidity no it is just like krishna is described adi purusha he is the original person and uh, he is also described as purana purusha purana purusha purana purusha means he is the oldest person the oldest person but immediately it is said 
even though he is Purana Purusha, oldest person, Navayavanamcha, he is eternally youthful. Eternally youthful. So you always see Krishna's description as a small boy or a youth, maximum 20 years old, say 16 to 20 years old. He never grows, apparently he never grows beyond that. Even when he appeared 5000 years back, on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, by our calculation, Krishna was 125 years old, but he appeared like a 20 year old young person. So eternally youthful, that is one of the qualities of Krishna. And the same quality we also share with Krishna. We also have the same quality, each one of us in our spiritual form, as spiritual beings, we are all eternally youthful. But material existence, the present material body that we have and the material existence is different. It is not eternally youthful, not youthful always, no. The youthful life is a passing phase for everyone. In this, in this present body that we have. And we have heard Krishna explain, we are not this body. So, forget about youthful stage of a passing phase of this body. Forget about that. You try to understand in your spiritual form, you are eternally youthful. So, that life, that existence is awaiting us provided we become eligible, we qualify. So to qualify, Krishna is telling, uh, you, should, you should not be disturbed when there is transmigration of the soul. It means when there is going to be change of body at the time of death. So particularly he is addressing Arjuna that Arjuna was thinking, how can I kill my grandfather? How can I kill my teacher? So Krishna is pointing out, your grandfather, your teacher, they will not die. It looks like they are going to die in the battle. But at death, they will simply transfer to another body. It is like, Vasamsi jirnani yatha vihaya. Vasamsi means the the dress we have experienced, we got some dress and uh, that dress when it becomes old and worn out, then we discard that and we accept a new one. Similarly, this body at the time of death, whether young or old, at the time of death we have to give up this body. Death of the body, as I mentioned earlier, body dies, the soul doesn't die, you don't die, your body dies at the time of death, so you have to quit the body. Dead body is useless for you. You cannot live in a dead body, so you have to quit the body. So quitting the body is not that there will be no uh, body at all, no. There is going to be another new body, there is going to be a new body. So that new body they are going to get, Drona, Bhishma, uh, all of them they will get a new body. So therefore don't lament for their uh, so called death. In discharging your duty as a Kshatriya in this Dharma Yuddha, that's very important. It's not that violence is justified. Anyway, when a person dies, I am not killing the person. So like, how does it matter, you know, whether he is going to die or going to live? No, that is not the correct understanding. The understanding is, in a Dharma Yuddha, a Kshatriya's duty is to fight. In a Dharma Yuddha. 
So Arjuna is being instructed by Krishna to fight in this particular battle as because it is a Dharma Yuddha and it is going to result in Bhishma and Drona and everyone in this battle whoever dies fighting they will all get a new body which will be better than their present body. So therefore there is no reason for lamentation for Arjuna and Krishna is also telling the state of existence in the new body should be not the state of existence like in this body. In this body, our state of existence, material existence, it is called Jiva Bhuta. We are called Jiva, living being, but our existence at present in this body, in this world, in this life, is called Jiva Bhuta. Jiva Bhuta means constantly engaged in a struggle for uh, existence. Uh, we are engaged in a struggle for existence with our six senses, including the mind. You know the five senses, the eyes, the ears, the nose the tongue and the sense of touch. In addition to these five senses, in the Bhagavad Gita is described, there is a sixth sense which is within, that's the mind. So, mind plus these five senses, we are simply engaged in a struggle for existence. All the time. In this world, in this body. So, this is called Jiva Bhuta existence. So Krishna is telling in the Bhagavad Gita, there is another existence, spiritual existence. What is that spiritual existence called? It is called Brahma Bhuta. Brahma Bhuta. Brahma Bhuta means spiritual existence, spiritual life. And Brahma Bhuta characteristic is Prasannatma, always joyful, always joyful. No question of Sukha, sometimes, sometimes Dukkha, no. It is different existence, that Brahma Bhuta existence. It is always joyful, provided one has properly understood and has realized, I am Brahman, Aham Brahmasmi, that means I am spirit soul, I am eternal, I am uh, meant to live in the spiritual world, I am not meant to live here in this world. Generally, people while living in this world, they make so many plans and all their plans are done in, mostly done in ignorance about what is the possibility in the next life. Uh, the next life is there itself, some people doubt. But if they understand there is a next life, uh, they don't uh, take authoritative uh, information from the Bhagavad Gita, from the proper source, if they don't get information, then they are not sure. Even if there is a next life, what is that life going to be like? So, here we understand the next life will be similar to the present life in terms of engaged in constant struggle for existence if we don't realize or understand our actual nature is spiritual. We are spirit soul. If you don't realize that, if you don't know that, if you don't understand that, then it is going to be another material body. We are going to get a new body after death. Yes. We will continue uh, living. We always continue living. But if it is going to be another material body, it is simply going to be again another struggle for existence. And you can very easily understand, we cannot take anything material with us. Mrityu sarva harashchaham. Mrityu, death means everything is uh, lost. As far as I am concerned, if I die, means I quit this body, I can't take anything with me. Uh, people know this. At least in our culture, most people know this. But they don't consider very seriously 
if i am not going to take with me anything why am i working so hard for accumulating so many material possessions now, virtually in our modern age people are so much mad after getting more and more possessions uh, added to the uh, number of shops that are there which are selling so many different goods they have also got an online shopping you don't even have to probably stir out of your house you simply uh, order on a website or on a phone or whatever on your mobile whatever you want you pick and choose and uh, you just uh, click of a button and uh, you give your credit card details and you get uh, uh, it delivered to your home wherever you are so this is uh, madness this simply going on accumulating more and more material possessions now please remember that uh, for each of these possessions so much of effort energy and so much of uh, hard labor is involved or the hard earned money is uh, not very intelligently invested we are not against working hard for uh, getting some wealth no but how are you going to utilize that wealth in your life if you think everything is finished at death let me enjoy before death comes then that's a very foolish uh, proposition that's not a very intelligent proposition and if you think that oh i can uh, leave behind things uh, for my family members so that they can live happily then that is also not very intelligent thing because you should consider what are you going to take with you the fact is you are going to continue life in a different body so what are you going to take with you so as i mentioned once earlier uh, you can take with you something which is like a spiritual asset that spiritual asset comes with you it is eternally yours and it comes with you so this a uh, realization this understanding this knowledge i am brahman this is something like a spiritual asset this is a spiritual asset so if you get you acquire this asset you carry this with you and it's going to lead you to spiritual existence it is going to make you eligible for spiritual existence and that spiritual existence is completely joyful huh? it's not that you have to become happy by making some arrangement by acquiring some uh, uh, comforts in life by by adjusting things uh, which are favorable for your senses no constitutionally even uh, simply being in spiritual existence just being in spiritual existence you are completely joyful so this is unknown to us this state of existence in our present condition is unknown to us so that krishna is informing uh, so you should um, uh, understand this ex- this body which is actually the cause of happiness and distress or the source of happiness and distress is simply external to me it is simply a covering i have nothing to do with this body as far as my eternal life is concerned for now i have to maintain this body for what for actually practicing krishna consciousness for practicing bhakti yoga i have to maintain this body not maintain this body for acquiring more material possessions no maintain this body for the sake of practicing bhakti yoga to become eligible before death comes to actually enter eternal spiritual life so uh, realizing this uh, fact that this uh, happiness and distress pertaining to the body all material happiness and distress is pertaining to the body only even if you consider in terms of the mind some types of pleasures are pertaining to the mind not necessarily to the body but even the 
pleasure pertaining to the mind is also external to the soul to you to the real you to the real i to the real person it is external mind is also external because this mind changes as i've mentioned earlier we acquire a certain type of mentality as a result of different activities that we do that mentality decides what type of body we are going to get next so if we develop spiritual mentality then we are going to get a spiritual uh, we attain our spiritual form spiritual nature no more material body so that is a joyful uh, existence full of joy filled with joy by its very nature not by adjustment not by acquiring things not by making uh, uh, some comforts available no it is joyful by its very nature just like if you have a body which doesn't uh, become old nava yavanam then isn't that uh, a a joyful existence if you have a body which never gets diseased isn't that a joyful existence if you have a body which never is going to die isn't that a joyful existence so that is the nature of spiritual form spiritual existence spiritual life brahma bhuta existence so that brahma bhuta existence means realizing this body that we have the jiva bhuta existence is external to us is not our original uh, form of body it is not our our actual uh, we it is not i it is not that i am this body or you are not the body no person is the actually the body the material body so uh, some uh, uh, practical tips for realizing this external this body is external to me it is not of real uh, consequence uh, in terms of developing the spiritual mentality except for some minimum maintenance of this body uh, some minimum maintenance yes it is required some food some clothing some shelter but minimum minimum because we have to save time but to save our energy for actually preparing our uh, our uh, our heart our consciousness for the future uh, before that comes before that comes to practice bhakti yoga that is the preparation for our uh, uh, wonderful uh, eternal um, uh, life after uh, we quit this body so uh, one of the practical tips that was given by shrila prabhupad i explained yesterday just like uh, a dream we all have experience of dream that night dream we all uh, have experience and we know what is its value it is just uh, simply something we uh, see or we experience for some short time and it's all finished over nothing to worry or nothing to be excited about if it is a pleasant dream nothing to be excited about and if it is a bad dream it is a fearful dream then nothing to worry about so like that even the day time our life in this body day time also is another dream that is very very important to understand and you should uh, uh, contemplate on this and actually think about this and uh, try to uh, realize this so that uh, you can actually uh, develop the seriousness to invest your va- valuable time that is uh, the balanced time left after taking care of the basic minimum necessities of your maintaining this body and your your important uh, uh, fundamental duties towards your family or towards your society whatever important duties are there you do those duties but 
you save time for practicing bhakti yoga don't neglect bhakti yoga practice this is a opportunity in the human form of life is the only opportunity to practice bhakti yoga other forms of life they cannot practice bhakti yoga for them change of body at death is inevitable where they going to get another material body so now i'll take some questions here i have some questions uh, krishna appears on earth once every day of brahma so the question is is it the same brahma again and again who will be present when krishna appears once every day of brahma yes brahma's life span is the longest in this entire material creation brahma lives from the beginning of the creation of this universe till the universe is completely destroyed at the end of brahma's life brahma's life and universal destruction are happening at the same time end of brahma's life brahma lives a fantastically long life span according to our calculation according to our calculation and that calculation is given in the bhagavad gita brahma's one day is equal to 1000 cycles of the four yugas that we undergo a cycle of these four yugas is something like 43 lakh years according to our calculation 43 lakh years so brahma's one day is our 43 lakh years we can't even imagine what is this 43 lakh years so anyway brahma lives such days 30 days in a month 12 months in a year 100 years brahma lives according to his calculation so every day is the same brahma yes the same brahma now and another part of this question is is brahma going to again and again steal the cowherd boys when krishna comes now this as far as the pastimes of krishna are concerned uh, krishna's pastimes are variegated so krishna's pastimes are not exactly merely repeated no uh, krishna's pastimes are very very dynamic so for brahma every day krishna appears is a new experience is a totally new experience in the spiritual world everything is dynamic so when krishna comes to this world and performs his leela it is very very dynamic it is fresh it is always fresh uh, so it is not that simply another time brahma is going to steal or some uh, krishna is going to do some activities like what he had done earlier no it is uh, completely uh, fresh and new and ever fresh it is always fresh and ever new that difficult for us to understand in our present uh, uh, condition but it's a fact that krishna's activities krishna's form krishna's uh, um, qualities ever new ever fresh next question the population of the world is increasing every day so where were these souls earlier so this we have to understand what we count as the population of the humans on this earth we may compare what was the population human population let's say 10 years back or 50 years back 100 years back with today's population and we may say it has increased but we should remember inside this body human body there is the spirit soul similarly inside the body of every worm every insect every animal every plant every aquatic there is the spirit soul the spirit soul is equal spirit souls there is no uh, different levels or different kinds of uh, um, um, qualities no spirit soul are all eternal every spirit soul within every body is eternal every living body is eternal so the spirit souls are always there 
either in human form of body or uh, the aquatics or whatever. Now the difference is from the human form of body when death comes and a human being, a soul in a human body has to change the body, it's a junction point that they may get another human form of body in the next life or they may get a body which is a superior form in this world which is like a body of a devata or they may get a lower life form like that of an aquatic or a worm or an insect or a dog or a, or a bird or a germ any any other type of body so human form of life is a junction point it all depends on the activities we do in this human form of life. If our activities are in uh, accordance with the scriptural directions, injunctions, we perform pious activities, we elevate our, our, uh, uh, ourselves to the better form of life. And of course, if somebody practices a bhakti yoga, then the next life is neither any form of body in this world, neither better nor same nor lower. We get spiritual form in the spiritual world. We don't take birth again in this world at all after quitting this body if we practice bhakti yoga. So, uh, there is no question of counting the uh, human population and wondering where the souls are coming. The lower life forms, they are constantly evolving. They are constantly evolving. So, after a certain type of body in the uh, animal species, this, that is also described by Prabhupada, like somebody is having a body of a monkey, some soul, then they are, next life is that of a human being. And somebody is... Uh, having the body of a lion, some soul, then they will be born into a, a human form of life. They will get a human birth in the next uh, life. And somebody is having the body of a cow. So these three animals particularly, uh, they, uh, the soul in those bodies will evolve to get uh, the human form of body. So evolution as described in the scriptures pertains to the evolution of consciousness from lower levels to higher levels. And the highest evolution of consciousness is to become Krishna conscious so that we get the best form of uh, life that is the spiritual form. Next question. <clears throat> Towards the end of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells Arjuna, Yatha Ichasi Tatha Kuru. Yes, Krishna tells Arjuna after instructing the whole Bhagavad Gita, I have instructed you, I have answered all your questions. Now it is up to you. You have the freedom to do as you like to do, whatever you want to do. But Arjuna's reply is, Karishye Vachanam Tava. I will follow your instructions. So, what does this indicate? This indicates that um, spiritual life is never forced. To follow Krishna's instruction is not a matter of force. It is a voluntary choice by each person. Each person. So, if you choose to follow Krishna's directions, then it is for your benefit. You will get eternal life will become free from all miseries, all your problems are solved, everything is over. But if you choose not to follow or you don't care for Krishna's instructions or you choose to remain uh, uh, ignorant about spiritual uh, facts, then you continue in this material world. According to your karma, you're going to get another body at the time of death and that could be a better body or inferior or better or superior, whatever. But any form of body, the fundamental miseries are there that we should not forget. Birth, death, disease, old age, these miseries always are there in all forms of life within this world. So I'll stop here.